is Brett, and I'm your Food Corps Service member this year. And today we are going to be celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month by making salsa and tortillas. So what does Hispanic Heritage Month mean? This month-long period, September 15th to October 15th, is dedicated to recognizing the con contributions and influence of Hispanic Americans to the history, culture, and achievements of the U.S. The word Hispanic refers to people, cultures, or countries related to the Spanish language, Spanish culture, Spanish people, or Spain in general. Spanish is spoken in many countries in Latin America, such as Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Peru. So today we're going to be making tortillas and salsa, but where do they come from? Salsa is the Spanish word for sauce. We use it in English to describe lots of different sauces that we use on traditionally Mexican dishes, such as tacos or even just eating with tortilla chips. Tortillas, though the word tortilla comes from Spanish, meaning small cake, it was first made by indigenous people before Spanish colonialists were here. It originates back to Mesoamerica in 500 BC. start by cooking our salsa. So we are going to need two to three tomatoes, one jalapeno, one small onion, two cloves of garlic, a lime, and salt. So first I would like to address knife safety. You're going to pretend that your hand is a bear claw and grab it like so, with your fingers away. When we're cutting with our knife, we're gonna make sure our fingers are away from where we're cutting. We're holding the object steady and then it's on a flat and sturdy surface, such as a cutting board. So see how I'm turning my fingers away from where I'm cutting but still holding it steady? The type of salsa we're making today is called pico de gallo. It originated in Mexico and is often called Mexican salsa because the three ingredients, the red tomato, the white onion, and the green jalapeno represent the three colors of the Mexican flag, rojo, blanco, y verde. The word pico de gallo in Spanish means rooster's beak because traditionally it's eaten using your pointer finger and your thumb finger like this. So it looks like a rooster's beak. When you're finished using your knife, you're gonna to wanna to set it down away from where your hands are. So when you're busy over here cooking and mixing and getting your ingredients ready, you don't accidentally cut yourself with it. Okay, so we've cut up our tomato and we're gonna put it into our bowl. Yum. Next, we're gonna cut up our onion. And it's the same thing. We're holding it steady on our cutting board, cutting away from our fingers. Okay, great. So we cut up our onion, our saboya, and we're going to mix our onion in with our tomato. One cool thing about onion, so I cut a piece that was this long, but really it's a bunch of smaller pieces because onions are layered. And so you don't have to do as much work cutting because it easily comes apart because that's how it's made. That's how it grows. This is what garlic looks like when it's picked. It's in its nice own little packaging basically that nature makes for us. And then inside, there's each, there's usually about six or seven or eight little cloves of garlic, we call them. So we're just gonna use one clove today. So you can take your garlic, you cut it open, it will look like this, and you just take one clove of garlic out, and it just looks like that. It's like a big bean. Garlic is really strong tasting. It's like an even more intense onions. We want to make sure we cut our garlic really small so that 
it's not too overwhelming and the taste can be spread out throughout the whole dish and that it's not just in one part of it. So we're gonna chop it really small and even though what we're cutting is small and we're cutting it in small pieces, we are still remembering our knife skills. We're still keeping our fingers away from our knife. We're still holding it steady. Okay, so when you've cut your garlic up, you are going to put it in your bowl. Okay, last but not least is the jalapeno. Jalapeno peppers are very spicy. So some of you may have eaten bell peppers at your house. Bell peppers are sweet and delicious and yummy. Jalapeno peppers are also yummy, but they're spicy. So I'm only gonna put a half in mine because I think it might be too spicy for me. We have our rojo red tomatoes, blanco white onions, and our verde green jalapenos. So we have our Mexican flag. But now we need to flavor it. So we're gonna take a lime, which is also green, and we're just gonna squeeze the lime juice in. I'm gonna use a fork to stir it. So I'm just gonna stir. This looks so yummy. Now I'm gonna just put a pinch of salt. So I'm gonna just take my finger and pinch some salt in. And the tomato soaks up the salt and it's really yummy. Okay, and that's our pico de gallo. Okay, so now we're going to make our tortillas. So the basis of tortillas is a crop that grows throughout the US. Can you guess what it is? That's right, corn. So we're going to take corn flour, which comes in a bag just like normal flour, and looks like this. How do you think that corn got to look like this? That's right, the kernels are grinded up. Traditionally, it's with a mortar and pestle, but again, I just bought mine from the store like that. So that's our main ingredient, is our corn flour. We're also going to use some hot water, but you can use low sodium vegetable stock, and of course, salt. So this is a little bit less work than making the pico. So we're gonna take a medium or large size mixing bowl and pour in a cup and a half of our corn flour and our salt. I'm using half a teaspoon. That's a little bit much, but I really like things to be salty. And we're gonna mix it up. So we're gonna pour in our warm water slowly, just a little bit at a time, and stir until it's one mixture, until it's all mixed perfectly together. So just a little bit and stir, a little bit and stir. So once we have our dough, we're gonna press it into tortillas. Now traditionally, we use what's called a tortilla press. This is what a tortilla press looks like. Usually they're made from metal like this, so they're pretty heavy. Sometimes they're made from wood and they're a little lighter. If you don't have a tortilla press at home, that's totally fine. You can use something called parchment paper, which looks like this. Maybe you baked with it before. It's like this waxy fabric. You can use plastic wrap you can I like to put it on a cutting board and just press down with my palm even so we're gonna take um, think about a ping pong ball grab a ping pong ball size of dough and roll it into a ball make sure that it is again one cohesive dough we don't want crumbles on it we want it to be one piece of dough so we have our ball we're gonna place it on our tortilla press or on our cutting board, wherever we're pressing it down. And 
voila, we have a perfectly pressed tortilla. So once you have your tortilla, it should be about six inches in diameter. A diameter is a line that goes through a circle and crosses through the center. So think about it this way. If you were gonna fold your tortilla in half, the line at which you would fold it is the diameter. So that's about six inches. And let's keep going, shall we? Now it's time to cook our tortillas. This is very important. Do not do this without a caregiver or an adult around. You cannot use a stove without an adult. So we're gonna take some olive oil and pour it into our pan. That was a lot. And we're gonna put it in medium heat. We're gonna let our pan cook a little bit, our olive cook. We want everything to be hot. Okay. Once your oil is heated up, you're gonna take one of your tortillas and lay it in there. I'm gonna use a wooden spatula and we're just gonna leave it on for about one minute. So start your timer, one minute. In another minute we can take our tortilla out okay so I like to put my tortillas on a paper towel or a dish towel so that the oil can soak out of it a little bit and we'll let it cool off okay so now we have our tortillas and our pico de gallo. So I also made some frijoles, some beans, and I'm going to have that in my tacos, but there's tons of things you can put in your tacos, and of course I'm putting our yummy pico de gallo in. And I'm gonna eat some lunch, almuerzo. I hope that everyone had fun today and learned something new. Adios.